I've been fired three times. <laughs> and I'm damn proud of it. The most recent time I was fired was in 2002. And the company that I was working for was acquired and they said, you know what, um, get out of here. You're not really very important anymore. So um, what did I do? I made my resume and I put all this um, quasi important stuff, or at least that I thought was important onto a piece of paper. I did outbound marketing to try to find a job in 2002, and it was brutal. If anyone looked for jobs during that period of time, I mean, I suppose anyone, anytime you look for a job, it's brutal, but oh my gosh, was it brutal at that time. And it was hard, I had to interrupt my friends, I had to interrupt my parents' friends, I had to interrupt my friends' friends and, and say, I'm looking for a job, please look at my resume and send it to anybody who you think might be interested in me. Guess what? We're just using the new tools and we're doing exactly the same thing right now. At least that's what I see. These people that I haven't spoken to for a really long time, finally they reach out to me. Oh, cool, I haven't heard from you in ages. What's going on? I'm looking for a job. Well, gee, thanks a lot. Why didn't you reach out to me a real long time ago? So um, LinkedIn, great tool, but it's all about this interruption thing. I'm here to say, let's make it about inbound marketing. Let's make it about when you're marketing yourself, why not make it inbound? We're all marketers. We're all inbound marketers. Yet so many people and even people who want to get new jobs in inbound marketing are using outbound techniques to try to do so. I, there is such a huge opportunity to twist this and turn it and put it on its ear and publish really great content, whether it's blog posts or YouTube videos, tweets, get it out there, show us who you are, and then guess what? The companies that are looking for what you have to offer are looking or they're finding, or when you network with people, oh my God, I have to tell this person about this person. No, no, no. Oh, sure, I'll send a link to your blog post any day of the week. When I get that email or that tweet, hey, I'm looking for, for a job, would you mind retweeting this? Yeah, happy to do that. It's all about getting found. Now, I don't need to say this again because we've all heard it so many times, but I'm gonna. We are in the middle of the biggest revolution in human history in terms of communications, no doubt about it. The biggest revolution in communications in human history is going on right now. We're all a part of it. We're at the very top of this revolution. We are leading this revolution. The second biggest revolution in communications in human history happened 550 years ago with the invention of the printing press. 550 years ago with the invention of the printing press. Finally, people could read for themselves. They could afford books that were printed and they could learn that it was all, that maybe those religious leaders aren't telling the truth. And now we're doing the same thing with mobile technology and the technologies of inbound. Do you know more people have mobile phones than have toilets? Did you know that more people have mobile phones than have toothbrushes? Kind of gross, but true. Um, so earlier this year, I was in Cairo. This is me in Tahrir Square. Uh, we used inbound, we used social media, not we, the Egyptians, to bring down a government. It looks like they're gonna bring down three governments over the course of about two and a half years. I'm supposed to speak there in October. Do you think I should go? I do. My wife's in the room, raise your hand. Um, I don't know whether she's gonna let me, but we'll, when we get there, we'll figure it out. So Tahrir Square, with, a, with, a, with mobile devices, this is Kangandi and Kunayala in Panama. And this is in a remarkable village of 300 people. They moved the entire village, the entire village, one kilometer from the side of a river to the top of a hill. Huts and all, everything moved. It took them several months to move it. Why? Because they had mobile phone reception at the top of the hill. They have no running water, they have no electricity, they charge their mobile devices with a solar system. They have iPads. They don't have running water, they don't, run, they don't have, it's, don't have, um, they don't have electricity. Transformed this village because they used to have to take their canoes and go down the river to, to sell their, their products. Now they can actually do the deals with their mobile devices. So, transformational 
absolutely transformational. We are in the biggest communications revolution in human history. Yet the way that we look for jobs and frequently the way that companies look for employees is still as if we're in this outbound era. It's all about, wow, did that slide get screwed up? Um, it's, all about enter it's all about attention. Did I get your attention with this horrible slide that was not checked? Always come to early to the room and do a sound check. That's my rule. Why didn't I do it this time? You got me. Um, I, I broke my own rule. There's a blog post in that, Tim. Um, OK, let's talk about how, how a couple of people got hired. How did Dan get hired? Dan was creating great content on the web. He actually then got connected on LinkedIn to HubSpot, and he got a job. I love Dan's stuff, by the way, Dan Lyons. Dude, he does, um, is this fake Steve Jobs? Um, he does the secret, he did the secret diary of Steve Jobs. Dude, I invented the friggin' iPhone, have you heard of it? Uh, and, and everybody loves, um, loved what Dan was doing at the time, um, his fake Steve um, uh, uh, Twitter feed. And HubSpot hired Dan because of the content he created. There's a great blog post you should check out, Why I Hired Fake Steve Jobs, that Mike Volpe wrote. Um, you know, some of the reasons, um, black turtlenecks, white sneakers, yoga mats. Um, there's other reasons, mainly about inbound, ma mainly about content. Eric, Eric wanted to work at a company called Real and Marketing and Design. So he did a series of YouTube videos. Now in his case, it's a little different. In his case, he targeted a company that he knew he wanted to join, and then he created first a YouTube video saying why he wanted to work at Vreeland and why he should work at Vreeland, and he pushed that out. He actually got an interview. He went and did the interview, and then he did another one, another YouTube video, thanking them for the visit. And, and I, um, these are just a couple of images of the YouTube uh, videos that he did. But he thanked them for that, and he got the job. He targeted one company in particular. You can achieve a similar success. I've seen it so many times. There's no question that you can achieve a similar success. Lindsay was a student at Tufts University until um, she graduated last year. Lindsay created a great blog and a great website about how to market to millennials, her generation. And she pushed those pieces of content out to serve as her inbound marketing she also, this is her, um, her great um, blog here. Now think about it. People are trying to reach millennials. They're searching on millennial marketing. How can I reach millennials? They find her. That serves as her inbound job search, inbound marketing, and she got hired as a result of it. There's um, uh, Lindsay's Twitter feed. One more small example here, Sam. A little bit different in Sam's case. Sam saw that there were a bunch of interesting positions on the HubSpot website. And he goes, wow, I want to get one of those. <laughs> and I love this. This is a fantastic. Sam made a webinar. And he invited people from HubSpot to watch his webinar about why he should be hired. Is Sam in the room by any chance? Um, Sam was hired. Um, so there we go. Those are just four quick examples of this idea of inbound marketing. This idea that the content you create shouldn't just be your marketing content for the companies you work for, but it should be the content for you as well. And that should serve as the way that you find your next gig. It should set you up for your next gig. If you end up wanting to go out on your own or start your own agency or start your own company, that serves as your calling card for the VCs or anybody else that you're trying to reach. One thing that I, I, I also noticed about this idea of inbound job search is how few companies relatively are using the same ideas to find people. It's actually about 40% is the latest data I've heard of companies that are looking for people through social, who are look, doing searches on Google for people. So here's a really interesting question. If you're in the job market or your spouse or your boyfriend or girlfriend or, or, or a relative or a friend is in the job market, what happens when they Google their name and the most recent company they worked for. 
Because guess what? Whatever pops up, that's who you are. Because on the web, you are what you publish. If you're publishing great information like, like Dan and like Sam and like Lindsay, then you're great. If you're publishing nothing on the web and the only thing that pops up is some arrest record from 20 years ago or something, then on the web, you're nothing. And if you're publishing bad information, then on the web, you're bad. So some people say to me, well, okay, David, you know, these ideas might work for people who are looking for marketing jobs. So I have a final sh story to share with you. And um, Yukari doesn't know this is coming, but it's the story of our daughter, Allison. And Allison came to us when she was 16. And, she's, and Allison's not here. We should have invited Allison. Should, we should have invited her. Um, Allison, at, when she was 16, says, I want to go to Columbia. And we're like, oh my god, all right. Yeah, nice, nice girl, nice kid. Um, you know, you just like, let's aim for the top. <laughs> and we're like, okay, yeah. I mean, she's got good grades, she's got, you know, she's got decent extracurriculars, but lots and lots and lots of kids do. And I said to her, um, and Yukari writes books, uh, she got two books about Twitter. <laughs> she tweets, she blogs. Um, so you can, and we, have th we have only have one daughter, only have one child. So you can imagine our dinner conversations, right? You know, it, it's, it's tweeting, it's blogging. And my, my daughter's like, would you guys stop talking about that? She says to us, would you please put away your mobile phones? Would you please stop doing that? You know, we're in a restaurant. Oh, we got it. It doesn't exist unless it was tweeted. You know, would you guys stop doing this? Like completely the opposite of most households. So I said, Allison, we will work to get you into Columbia. And she goes, oh, dad, daddy, don't tell me I have to tweet. And I go, no, 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 it's not about Twitter. It's about blogging. <laughs> so I convinced Allison to start a blog about neuroscience. And it, because she wanted to go into neuroscience, she wanted to be a neuroscience major at Columbia. And again, why not think big? I want to be a neuroscience major at Columbia. And so we start, we, she started a blog. And actually, she got really into it. And I, we just, I just helped her to get going, and she did everything else herself. She created the, helped create the masthead. She started to do the categories of it. She did all sorts of things herself. You know, and we didn't make it look too slick. You know, it's, it's her thing. And I, this is the last post she did before she had to submit her application. And that's Oliver Sacks, a Columbia University neuroscience professor whose book she reviewed. Not a smart kid, right? So she took it beyond where we talked about it. And uh, she did this great blog. Now, she sends in the application. It's electronic these days. And back in the days of paper, went for me. And on there is a link for how, you, uh, how the, the admissions people can link to things. And no one ever uses that space to put a piece of content there. Nobody. It's all black and white. It's I'm on the swim team, and I'm on this, and I'm, I play the French horn, and, and I'm the, a member of the debate team. And nobody says, I write a blog about neuroscience. I create content. And that blue link, people are just itching those admissions officers to push that button. And they did push that button. And then when we got, there's Allison at Columbia freshman year. When we got, um, she got in, they tell you electronically, and then they sent a, a hand, the a head of admissions sent a letter with a handwritten note on there that we loved to read your application and check out your blog, which is just the point. They don't expect that. It's about content. It's about job search, it's not just marketing, it's everybody, and it's about anything you'd like to do personally. The biggest barrier to this is the four-letter word that begins with F, and that's fear. We have to stop making excuses when you're looking for a job, even before you're looking for that job. Get out there, create that content. I'm David Meerman Scott, and this has been Inbound Job Search. Thanks very much.